Hello, Benjamite here. Well, have you ever found yourself like that, reaching that point where Dofus feels more like work than fun? Or maybe you're totally bored of the things that you typically do on Dofus and you find yourself just aimlessly staring at the screen, hoping something's going to jump out at you and make it all fun again. <laughs> Well, that's exactly what this video is here for, with over 15 ideas and suggestions to hopefully help you get past that moment of boredom, maybe try some things you hadn't thought of trying before. Okay, the first category I got here is called the obvious suggestions. These are most likely things you've already thought about trying, maybe even done them a little bit, but hey, I gotta suggest them anyways. Very first suggestion I got for you are the achievements and quests. There are many awesome things that you can get in Dofus just by completing these things. If you go down through here and select some things, over here on the right hand side is gonna show your completion. Check out some of these that say zero on them. Go here, check out the quests that are involved in these. There's all kinds of neat little titles that you can get, and a lot of them also carry like ornaments that you can get, and those will give your banner a whole new look and some effects to it. You've probably seen some other people running around with those. You can collect a whole bunch of those in Dofus just by going through there. Not to mention, if you select the main quest and start working your way through here, this is how you get the actual Dofus eggs in Dofus. If you haven't gone through those and collected them, there's a lot of stuff there that can be done that gets you a really cool reward in the end. Another really cool thing about doing the main quest especially, if you take the time to read the NPCs and the things that they have you interact with during this process, you'll begin to learn the story and some of the lore of Dofus which can be very fascinating. You'll learn all kinds of things about the game, which can create a whole new feeling. Instead of just going through the quest and following along a wiki, you can read those and get some really neat story. And one new feature I'll point out that's kind of fun too, if you're looking for some really random things, but also get a sense of accomplishment, select this overall progress at the top. It's going to list things down here that you're actually pretty close to accomplishing. And then when you click on that, it's gonna take you straight to that achievement and show you exactly what you're missing. That can be a great way to maybe feel like you're making progress quickly because these are going to be things selected that you're already a little ways into. Another super obvious suggestion is going to be treasure hunting. If you haven't tried it before, give it a shot. It's actually pretty cool. I won't go into a lot of detail because this gets covered a lot, but I do have a video that I will link in the description. Try to put a card up here in the corner that walks you through the process of how to do this if you're completely new to it, but give that a couple tries. You might enjoy the process. Another very obvious suggestion. And this is going to be something that applies more to people that are level 200. You're at that end game and maybe you're looking for something a little different to do. The infinite dreams can be fantastic. It's this little symbol right here if you've never paid attention to that. I'm going to bring up the map here and what you'll notice is it's a huge area here. Each one of these represent a different floor and from what I understand it is literally an infinite number of floors you can go to. If you see in the left side over there it says 400 plus even though that's the center dot. Meaning if you can keep beating the situations that you come across, you can keep climbing. The higher you climb, the better the rewards you get. And what you're gonna find as you go through here, you're gonna fight bosses in rooms you've never fought before with enemies that you've never seen them grouped together before and can add a whole new twist to things as you begin to climb this. You can also add extra challenges yourself by adding more difficult monsters to a fight or penalties. And as you continue to progress your way, you're gonna get to more valuable loot and the higher you climb, the better the stuff gets. And there are some resources that you can only collect inside the Infinite Dreams area, which makes it extra valuable in that aspect too. All right, another thing I'm gonna throw out here at you, perhaps you've never really given professions much of a look, but if you click on your professions tab, you're going to see there are a bunch of professions available. The green ones are the gathering type professions, Blue are gonna be crafting type professions, and then the pinks or the magenta colored here is gonna be your mages. Now, every one of these professions can actually be leveled all the way up to level 200, just like your character. So once you've hit 200, you've maxed out that profession. But each level you go up creates that sense of progression, just like that fun feel you get when you level your character, you get that same feeling when you do it with your professions as well, because you also begin to unlock recipes that you couldn't craft before. And the higher you climb, typically the more valuable things begin to get. And admit it, you've probably got over 5,000 resources in your bank you're not using anyways. Well, grab some of those out. Grab some of these professions that you haven't leveled up before and start trying to craft some things out of those. It can be pretty fun.
All right, the first suggestion I got for you outside the obvious category is gonna be breeding. Breeding is kind of like a profession, but it really is a category all of its own. There's a lot more learning involved as you're trying to figure out how to use the different breeding resources. And if you want to, there's even more involved if you wanna figure out how to go out and capture the different mounts so that you can do the whole process on your own. If you wanna learn the basics of the breeding process, how to get them to the point of breeding and making the babies and things, I will link a video in the description below of where I have walked you through the basics of how to adjust those meters. An extra benefit you get out of breeding, perhaps you're not necessarily wanting to list those mounts in the market, you can take those certificates and go exchange them as well and get characteristic scrolls that you can either use to scroll your characters or sell them to make some commas, which can be kind of fun as well. Another one that I'm gonna throw out there is maybe not a, as obvious of a suggestion is start a new character. Yes, you've played the same character for a long time. They're level 200 plus. They have professions on them, but maybe that's part of what makes you feel like you're in a rut. Just create a new character on that same account and the whole game will have a completely new feel to it just because you're playing a class that's very different. If Craw is typically the class that you've played before, try switching it up to the Sacrier class where it's going to require you to be much more in the fight to be involved. If you've typically played the IOP class and you feel like you're just doing the same moves over and over again, switch it up to an Echo, which will continually throw you some curveballs, but still at the same time do lots of damage. And maybe your thing is more of a complex class and you've been using the Rogue for a long time and you really want something that's still challenging but different, grab the Zeller class. Trust me, it's very different, very complicated, but still very fun. Your new character is going to get a multiplier anyways, so that grindy feel that maybe you're scared of that took you to get to that first 200, it's not going to be near as bad as they're going to get a multiplier all the way up until the level of whatever character is above it. Nice thing is too, if you get two or three characters leveled all the way up there, then depending on how you're feeling it at night, you can pick a different class to play depending upon that. And then you got choices. All right, here's another suggestion for you. Definitely not in the obvious category, but help new players. People are constantly coming back to the game or finding the game for the very first time. Stand right outside the Incarnum temple right here and see the people that come out, say a hello, maybe they'll respond. You could start teaching them the game and showing them how to do it. The Incarnum dungeon can also be another great place to stand and maybe try to help people out. You'll find new people that are stuck here. Maybe run through the dungeon, see if somebody got stuck halfway through. It's not uncommon to find that Incarnum and you can go in there, help them through and start teaching them things about the game there as well. My last suggestion on where to maybe stand to help people, perhaps you don't want to help people that are all the way at those beginning levels, but maybe come here to the Frigost Village Zap. Stand here and check to see if there's anybody that's kind of looking to be helped through some higher dungeons. Maybe they haven't made it past the Penguin Dungeon and haven't gotten to see Area 2 and Area 3. Great place to come here and try to help people get to some content they haven't seen before. And one last suggestion I got for you, when all else fails, turn on the recruitment channel and just start hollering out there that you're looking to help some people run some stuff for free. Too often now we charge people to go help them level and to do dungeons they haven't done before. Just start shouting on there. You're looking to help people to go do some stuff for free. You might get some responses. Another not so obvious option for you is start yourself a guild. Tired of not finding people playing when you're playing? Well, if you start a guild and you start trying to recruit people that you see run around the same time that you're typically on, well, perhaps they play about the same time you're typically on. So go buy yourself one of these guild of gems. You can get them from the resource market, usually pretty cheap. Come here to zero, negative eight, run inside, build yourself a guild, start recruiting. So something else you can do is come here to the Dofus Reddit site and make yourself a posting. Post a comment on here that you just started an English guild on which server and say that you're recruiting. You'll probably get some responses this way as well. All right, something else you can try that's kind of wacky, maybe something you hadn't thought about before. If you've always been the same elemental build and you love your class and have no desire to change that class, no matter what, switch up your elements. If you've always been strength, try intelligence, try chance, try agility. Every one of these classes play very different in their different element. Perhaps you don't want to just jump straight to a level 200 in a new element. Well, create yourself another character of that class on that same account and then build them in the new element that you want. The nice thing about going that route is you will get to learn that elemental build from the ground up. Whereas if you just switch over at level 200, 
boom, here's all your spells. That might be a little bit overwhelming and not really teach you the class like you would like to know. But then you can have multiple elemental builds of the class that you like and you got to learn them. Here's another option for you. You can go hunt these militia enemies. If you go to the little star that you see on several of the different cities and go inside there, you're going to find these wanted posters. Now, these are not just like typical arc monsters, which are slightly variants of the class that they may already be. These are like actual mini bosses, depending on your level. They can feel like it. They've got mechanics all of their own a lot of times. And you just come up here and you click one of these. It'll tell you a little backstory on it if you wanted to read about that, give you a difficulty rating. And then when you select the search for that person, they get added to your wanted list. Now you do get a nice bucket of doubloons after this that you can use to get scrolls and then sell them if you want to or scroll up your own character. But just the fighting alone can add a whole new aspect of the game as you go try to track down and capture capture every one of these wanted characters. All right, here's another idea I'll throw at you. I won't get too detailed with this, but work the markets. A lot of times you can play these a lot like a stock market. You're trying to find those items that are maybe listed really cheap and you can buy them and resell them at a higher price. Or maybe you're gonna buy a big bulk of things and then relist them individually at, at a higher price. Trying to find them little jewels in the different resource markets, the consumables market, the equipment market. Just find something that you think you can buy, flip and turn for a profit. That can be a lot of fun. You can even set yourself a little personal challenge if you want to and say, okay, I'm going to start out with 50,000 commas. I'm going to use only this 50,000 commas and see what I can grow it into. It could be a lot of fun and addicting. So please play responsibly. <laughs> All right, here's another fun one that maybe you haven't thought of before. If you look on your map, you will see all these little smiley faces. These are little emotes that you can collect for your characters. Show your weapon. Whatever weapon you actually have equipped, you will hold it in the air and people will be able to see it. Kiss emote. This is something that you can use if you're going to do breeding. This is an emote that you can use to interact it with your mounts. Paper, rock, scissor. If you've got this, you can actually do paper, rock, scissors with people and play that. So there's all kinds of fun little emotes all over this place. Some are listed, some are not. Some require puzzles. Some require multiple people to be with you in order to get them. Some are just at the end of completing a dungeon. All kinds of fun little emotes that you can find and going around and collecting all those could be a really good time. Here's another one for you. If your haven bag looks like this, like some dusty old dirty in you trough, well, shame on you. You should be decorating this and making it something of your own. And you don't have to spend any commas or money to do so. If you come in here in the top left corner, you're gonna see the customize button, which is actually located behind my camera, but you click that and select customize. You're gonna get a menu here of all kinds of different floor pieces that you can do. There's furniture that you can select from, items to put on some of those tables. You can pick some of these items and start decorating what you want your room to look like. If you push the shift key, you can rotate items so you can put it up against a certain wall if you want to, but you can go through here and have a lot of fun and make this thing really neat to look at and it's something different to do. However, if you did wanna spend a little bit of money, you can come here to the actual do Fus website, go underneath items and select Haven Bags, and you'll find all kinds of fun themes that they have put together. And when you buy one of these, you actually get a whole bundle of different things that you can use to decorate if you really wanted to get wild and crazy with what some of your rooms could look like. Oh my goodness, that looks awesome. But you just select these, check to see what they look like, you can customize them however you want to, and really make that Haven Bag something fun to go hang out in. All right, this last category I got, I'm calling the extreme suggestions because these are like big change kind of things and probably won't appeal to most people, but I'm throwing them out here as suggestions because who knows, maybe it'll appeal to you. Now, the first suggestion I'm gonna give to you is try multi-accounting. If you've never done it before, if you've only run one account at a time, try running a team. Come over here to the Echo server and create yourself some characters to try. You can do it completely for free. If you got one account, your main account that's already subscribed, then so be it. Create two or three or four other characters on other accounts, leave them free to play, and just start running around in Carnum. Try Astrib. Try all those areas around Astrib. See if it's something that you like. Maybe you just start out with two characters and try a duo team. See if you're liking it. It might be a little too much to just jump straight to four. Then again, maybe having a whole team is something you really want to try. Try a whole team of four. 
but you got all that stuff you can try. It doesn't cost you anything and it'll add a whole new feel to the game, I promise you. Also, if you need any tips or help on how to get yourself set up to run it, I have a video. I will try to link it in the description below on teaching you how to run multiple accounts all by yourself. So has Dofus lost the thrill of suspense or consequences for you? Well, I've got the perfect solution for you to give a try. These heroic and epic servers here are permanent death servers. That means when your character dies, it's dead. You're starting back over. Now, the difference between the two, the heroic server, if you die to PVP or PVM, you're dead. And then your loot and stuff kind of gets spread out through all the enemies that are in that area. On the epic server, you only are permanently killed from PVM content. So on this one, you could still do PVP and it won't cost you anything. But the loot from when you die doesn't actually get spread to the enemies. You are, it's just gone. It, it, that's the end of it. But on these servers, there's no more rage quitting. There's no more, hey, let's just kill ourselves on this boss and come back in and try again. We kind of screwed up the beginning of this. No, you fight tooth and nail to make it because if you die, that's it. They're dead. You're starting over. Now, it's not all that bad because you do then get a six times multiplier. Now, both servers come with a three times multiplier on XP and professions from the beginning. And then if you die, you get six times XP until you catch up to the level of whatever character you died on. So yeah, the XP grind is not gonna be near as crazy bad, but you're gonna be leveling so fast trying to keep up with equipment and things like that might be a bit of a challenge. But I tell you what, if your thrill factor is what you're looking for, this might be the cup of tea that you've been waiting for. <laughs> All right, here's another suggestion for you. Again, big picture, very extreme, that's why it's in this category. Start yourself a YouTube channel, perhaps, that's something you would really enjoy. Maybe you've been thinking about it. Maybe you've been on the fence about doing it. Well, why not? If you're bored of the game or you're struggling to find things to do, try creating yourself a channel and start uploading content on that channel. There's lots of people that have successfully created themselves some channels and it's continuing to grow right now as we've had several new Dofus content creators join the content family on YouTube here recently. You might wanna do that as well. Who cares if you don't have all the proper equipment to get going. Just start recording stuff. If you need suggestions on how to get set up and a guide on how to do that, I'll link a video that I made here recently in the description below that will kind of get you started on that and maybe give you the slight push you need to make that leap to go for it. But just start doing it. You might really enjoy it. It's almost like creating a hobby within a hobby. It's a bit extreme. It's a lot different, but hey, it might be just what you need to make Dofus feel fresh to you again or break that boredom factor that you're fighting with. All right, here goes my last extreme suggestion. Take a break. I know what you're thinking. What? A Dofus content creator is telling me to take a break from Dofus? Yes. Think about this. If you sat down and ate your absolute favorite dish at your favorite restaurant for breakfast, lunch, and dinner day after day, eventually you would probably get tired of that dish. If you then took a break, came back to that dish a while later, you'd probably begin to enjoy it again because it's been a while. Well, if you've been playing Dofus for several years straight and you're just like at the point where it's like, man, I just do the same thing over and over again. No matter what I do, it just all feels the same take a break. It's supposed to be fun and there's no harm in taking a break and checking out some other stuff or finding some other hobbies to go do. Maybe what'll make Dofus feel fresh to you again is just stepping away from it for a while. I've often made the joke that you're not truly a Dofus player until you've walked away from it at least two or three times. <laughs> I think we've all done it. But yeah, if, it, if no matter what you're doing is working for you, just take a break for a little while. Come back a little later. You might be surprised at how much you enjoy it. And maybe grab some of those other suggestions I had when you come back. Don't come back and hop straight back on your same character. Maybe you come back, start a new character. Come back, try a different server. Come back, try a different element. One of those different things so then the game totally does feel different just because you're making another change after a break. Well, I hope you found that enjoyable. If you could do me a huge favor real fast if you haven't already and smack that like button for me, it would really help me out. And if you like Dofus PVM tips, guides, and gameplay, well, that's what this channel is all about. Consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on notifications so you know exactly when my videos go live. Until next time, you all be safe out there and I will see you on the next one.